What's going on, U.S. History Kids? <clears throat> Back at it with another video here. Talking about the Civil Rights Movement. Going to be a longer video today. We've got a lot to cover, a lot of pictures, a lot of content. Normal year, I mean, this is a two to three day lesson that we really uh, and unpack this, but just with the way things are this year, right? Um, we're going to have to cover a lot here in a video. Um, make sure you watch this video and complete the homework assignment, right? Um, but let's go ahead and get started here, talking about the civil rights movement of the 1950s to the 60s, and kind of its leg uh, lasting legacy into the day. So talking about civil rights in America, you know, I think at this point, you, you have a firm understanding of American history. You kind of know our, our complex and dark history with race, racism in America, the history of slavery, how America was really founded in a lot of issues and a lot of disagreements and debate often resulted around slavery, which have long lasting impacts to today. Um, during the 50s and the 60s, after World War II, there was a great deal and a, a big movement about achieving more equality and really trying to live up to what America wants to be is about a country that's truly free for everyone and equal for everyone, right? And that's what in the 50s and the 60s, the civil rights movement is all about. It's about really challenging a lot of the legal procedures and laws of our country at the time to truly make a better place, especially for people of color. And that's when we talk about civil rights in America, we're primarily going to be focusing on, um, uh, you know, black, uh, black Americans. Uh, in a couple of videos, we'll talk about other groups who are marginalized, like LGBTQ+. Um, we'll talk about, you know, uh, you know Hispanic farm workers in, in the West Coast here in California. So we'll talk about them. Um, but uh, right now, for this lesson, we'll focus primarily on, like, the, the ills of uh, what it plagued Black America uh, here in the United States. So there's some Supreme Court cases that you should know about. Number one, Plessy versus Ferguson pretty much legally allowed for the United States to be segregated for places that wish to choose to be segregate, uh, segregated. You know, in America at this point, was still pretty racist, especially in the South, horrible conditions. I, I mean, I could go on and on and tell you a ton of stories just about how poorly black people were treated. Um, but uh, we just don't have time for all that. Uh, you know, schools, water fountains, bathrooms, restaurants were all legally segregated in the South. Um, and, you know, that's just the way it was. White people in one neighborhood, black people in the other. Um, you know, whites often and almost always receive preferential treatment uh, when dealing with loans, uh, dealing with police officers, finding work uh, where, you know, black people struggle, especially again in the South is where it's really bad. But across America, racism was bad. Still is in some ways today, right? But especially back then. These are just some examples, right, of the different colored fountain, uh, drinking fountains, right? And overwhelmingly, the conditions for, and they would name it either uh, colored or, or they would name it, um, you know, Negro fountain, right? Um, uh, it was, uh, it was, you know, the conditions for the colored bathrooms, um, the colored facilities were horrible, right? And usually just never very equal. There's a lot of, <laughs> there's a big movement at the time to integrate schools, right? Um, and you can tell these are, you know, young boys who are protesting. This is, uh, you know, uh, people that don't want black people in their schools, right? Um, this wasn't that long ago. This is from the 50s and 60s. You know, there are people alive today who, you know, hypothetically could have been uh, these kids protesting, right? A landmark case that finally said enough, we are ending segregation in this country was Brown versus Board of Education. It ruled that, you know, the separate but equal, the segregation, that's, that's a bunch of nonsense. Um, it violated our constitution, um, the 14th amendment, um, you know, where everyone should be equally protected. Um, it outlawed segregation in the United States, but the South and other places got very creative to still oppress black people just because they're like, oh, you're gonna end segregation, fine. 
you're, you're going to see what happens next. One of the first big uh, events that it comes after uh, the end of segregation is uh, the Little Rock Nine. And so this happens in Little Rock. Little Rock is uh, the capital city of Arkansas. Uh, Arkansas is kind of, if you know where Texas is, it go up to the right. And it's right there, Arkansas. Um, and it's a Southern state. Uh, you know, there were gonna be nine black students who were gonna be al allowed to enter a formerly all white school. And this was faced with a ton of opposition, so much so that the governor of Arkansas actually called his state guard to prevent the entrance of the kids going into the school. But in a way, that's a lot of like rebelling against, you know, the federal government. So President Eisenhower came in and said, nah, you ain't going to do that. He called in the National Guard and they pretty much punked the uh, state guard and the governor of Arkansas. Um, <laughs> And they escorted the kids into the school. And I mean, you could imagine, look at the looks of these people screaming at these kids, just trying to get an education, right? And again, you got to understand some of the issues we have today. These people had families. These people went, went to have kids. What do you think they were saying to their kids at the dinner table? And then what do you think those kids, when they grow up, then were telling their kids at the dinner table and so on and so forth right hate is taught right and it's often passed on through generations these are grown adults right and you can just tell the vitriol hate they have because someone wants to get education who just happens to be black right yeah crazy stuff man here you go you see the guard national guard actually escorting them they had to be escorted into a school wasn't that long ago. Rosa Parks, you've probably heard of Rosa Parks before. Rosa Parks, uh, pretty infamous um, because she refused to give up uh, a seat on the bus that was normally reserved for white riders. This was in Montgomery, Alabama. Again, a Southern state. Um, she was arrested, even though at this point, segregation, no longer, it's unconstitutional, right? And for years, you know, just because places were said, okay, you can't have segregation anymore, the South found really racist, clever ways to try and oppress and segregate black people. And Rosa Parks wasn't the first person to really fight against segregation and be defiant to these really racist rules. Um, but she's probably the most infamous and the, uh, the most well known. Um, we're actually gonna talk about someone in Montgomery, a young black preacher who was very passionate about racial equality and would soon become the face of the civil rights movements. You could probably take a guess on who that is. These are pictures of just Rosa Parks, right? When she does get arrested, right? In the background there, you see Martin Luther King. We'll talk about him. This is President Obama. That's on the bus where, and sitting in the same place where um, Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat, right? Kind of wild, man. It's a, it's a very crazy, beautiful moment, right? Would have never thought, there are a lot of people, man, would have never thought we would have ever had a black president. And that's crazy. He was elected in 08. So that was, was a little over 50 years from that moment. Just crazy. So some forms of protest that a lot of um, uh, activists um, uh, practiced in the 50s and 60s to improve civil rights were known as sit-ins and freedom rides. These were all in protest of segregation. So sit-ins were used to violate segregation and discrimination. So sitting on the counter of all white restaurants, sitting in the white parts of buses, and freedom rides were used to challenge the segregation of buses. And so, you know, black riders would travel um, from city to city and they would sit in white parts of buses and they would cycle out, right? That way new people got on the bus and to really just like punk this racist like segregation stuff. This is an infamous picture. These kids look, gotta be their teenage years, maybe early twenties. Look at this point. And uh, notice it's not just, um, uh, it's not just, uh, uh, although the majority of activists were black, right, for the civil rights movement, they were joined by occasionally like white people or other people who uh, felt that this was wrong. So you can see the people throwing food at them and, right, in general, being intimidating towards them, right? And these people peacefully just stood there, right, and sat there, excuse me. Uh, again, you see freedom riders, right? Again, primarily mostly black people, but occasionally join, right? 
by um, like a white person. You know, a lot of times, right, there was instances of buses being bombed, right, because of these freedom rides. So this is an instance of this, right? Again, just the craziness. It's almost hard to believe that this was a part of our history, right? But it was, and it wasn't that long ago. Marches is probably the most well-known um, form of kind of protest or uh, advocacy that was used kind of in the civil rights movement. Um, usually marches were used to bring awareness, right, to a racial inequality. And these marches could sometimes be very large. Um, you know, there's famous marches, including one in Selma, Alabama, that was used to fight for more voting rights for Blacks. It's going to be a part of your homework assignment, talking about voting, uh, voter suppression. There was a march in Birmingham, Alabama to end the segregation of the city of Birmingham. It was 1965. Probably the most famous was the March on Washington, which where Martin Luther King gave his famous speech, I have a dream and all that, um, to bring attention to overall racial issues in the country, right? Um, and some of these marches, of course, heavily policed. Back in the day, right, dogs were used to uh, enforce um, protesters and kind of suppress them. You've seen the, you've probably seen the videos and I'll show you in class, the videos of like, water uh, firefighter hoses being used, hosing people down. Um, this is the March on Washington, right? You can tell how many people are there to hear Martin Luther King speak, right? Um, talking about, you know, civil rights. Um, Martin Luther King, a little bit about him. Uh, was a Baptist preacher. He became, he has become the face of the civil rights movement. We have a holiday for him, right? Um, Martin Luther King was all about nonviolent protests. He wanted to achieve racial equality without the use of violence. Um, and then on the other hand, you had, and I put this in quotes, radical. Um, while Martin Luther King, right, was all about nonviolent, there were other people in the Black community that felt that little was changing, right, as a result of sit-ins, marches, and protests. And so they believed in gaining freedom through more radical ways, right, or by any means necessary. Uh, this includes like talking about Black Power, the Black Panthers, right? Black Power is something that it was a new terminology that was used. Um, and it describes just the empowerment, right? of People of black skin color. The Black Panthers were seen as, again, more of a radical civil rights group. They were actually started right here in Oakland, California. So that's pretty cool. But the Black Panthers, they really just organized urban patrols. They had food banks. They, they you know, would have neighborhood uh, watches. Um, anti-poverty programs, and it was just designed to really help people of color. And again, while most of their programs and intentions were for good and, and really not even violent, um, they received a lot of harsh criticism for their methods or clashes with police and government groups. The fact that, of course, they were black and they had weapons scared people, um, even though Second Amendment, America, right? We get to have our guns. Well, if you're black, we're actually gonna talk about that in a second. Maybe it's not as the same as it should be for everyone else. That's the Black Panther logo here. Those are kind of the, uh, the uniforms, right? You'd see the beret off to the side. Um, you got uh, Fred Hampton was a pretty famous leader of the Black Panthers in Chicago. There's a movie that just came out this year, got a lot of hype. It's called Judas and the Black Messiah. So you just go watch it. Um, you got Huey Newton, Bobby Seale right here. Uh, these were the starters of the founders of the uh, Black Panther Party right out of Oakland, California. You've probably seen this image before. Um, this is a famous protest. We have uh, the two Olympic, um, uh, two Olympic, I forget what event it was, but um, it, it's Tommy Smith and John, is it Carlos, John Carlos? Um, boy, I'm, I'm slipping on the names right now, but this is at San Jose State. This is at the Olympics when the national anthem was being played. When you win the Olympics, right, is the gold medal winner, their flag, their national anthem gets played. They put up the black power fist with the, you know, the black glove. Um, and this statue is at San Jose State, actually. So a little more of a Bay Area connection for you. Uh, they got a lot of hate. This was like the Colin Kaepernick of the time um, for what they were doing. Uh Talking about the capital invasion, but not the one you're thinking of. Actually, one that happened uh, way back in uh, the 60s, right? 
the Black Panthers stormed the California Capitol. And uh, it was this big deal, right? Um, now, uh, once this happened, California all of a sudden became a very anti-gun state, right? And, even, and it was actually led by Republicans. Ronald Reagan, who will become a president, was governor at the time. And he advocated, along with many other Republicans, to, you know, ban guns from being carried on government, federal go or state government grounds. Um, and uh, it started kind of really kicked the ball down and got the ball rolling for like anti-gun movements here in California. So a lot of people think it's actually Democrats and liberals who are anti-gun. That's not the real truth. Here in California, that was started by Ronald Reagan and the Republicans. And again, why did they all of a sudden ban guns? Right? If Republicans and those people are supposed to be so pro-Second Amendment, maybe that's not necessarily true. Maybe it's who gets to have the guns. Something to think about. This is just a picture, right, uh, at the Capitol of the event. So this kind of gets us to Malcolm X, um, born Malcolm Little. Uh, he was an African-American uh, Muslim who believed that the only way blacks would be free by is like by fighting for freedom. You know, his famous quote is, you know, by any means necessary. Uh, you know, he, he says, I was not the one to invent lies. They were created in a society divided by class and each of us inherited lies when we were born. It's not by refusing to lie that we will abolish lies. It is by eradicating class by any means necessary. So Malcolm X was really down for the cause to do what he had to do to bring justice and equality to America. But both met tragic ends, both Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. Malcolm X was assassinated in 1965 by a group known as the Nation of Islam, a group he was formerly aligned with. Um, they had had a falling out. And so I think, you know, and they, they, that group wanted revenge against Malcolm X. Whereas Martin Luther King was assassinated a few years later by a white man who was just racist and hated what Martin Luther King was fighting for, which was just equal treatment, right? The, uh, on the top, you see uh, that is uh, uh, Martin Luther King. He was shot in a, in, a, in a hotel. And then Malcolm X was shot when he was uh, about to give a speech at a ballroom. And along the way, I mean, Again, yeah, normally there's like a bunch of other things we talk about, but for what it is, it's what we have to do. There's a big legacy of the civil rights movement. Um, you know, obviously one, it outlawed segregation. Uh, eventually we got the Civil Rights Act, um, which outlaws any type of discrimination based on race, color, gender, sex, and national origin. Uh, it gives the Voting Rights Act, which outlawed discrimination in voting practices. Uh, it gave us Loving versus Virginia. It, it eliminated laws saying that you could not marry someone outside your race, right? Uh, that's a famous case of an interracial couple that wanted to marry in Virginia, which is technically a Southern state. But at the time, they banned those types of marriages, right? Um, generally, it helped racial, racial relations in the United States. And there was a lot of tragedy along the way, conflict. But uh, on the other side of it, it really, you know, the forced America legally from a constitutional standpoint to finally start treating black people as equal. And it's still not that way today, right? That's clear. Um, so there's still work to be done, right? And we're actually gonna talk about that in your homework assignment, um, especially like voter suppression, maybe what's going on in Georgia. So long video, a lot of slides, a lot to cover, and a lot of things we had to leave out, unfortunately. Um, we really couldn't go too into uh, the weeds as much as I'd like to, but um, this will get you what you need to know. Um, so good job. Hopefully you watch this video, do the homework assignment, and I'll talk to you guys later. Take care.